Welcome. Nice to connect with you in this way. You know, I think like one of the questions when we go through a program like this is just like, what is mindfulness? And also like, really, how could it help my blood pressure? And so, you know, I've been in the room with a lot of experts trying to figure out like what a common definition of mindfulness is. And it's interesting how it can be different things for different people, but these are some of the most common ways that um, we often think about what mindfulness is. So John Kabat-Zinn has often talked about mindfulness being the awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. And so I often think of it as like present moment awareness of like our thoughts, our emotions, our physical sensations, but in a non-judgmental way, like with curiosity and friendliness and gentleness. Another element of uh, mindfulness is remembering, or in other words, remembering to bring our wisdom into this present moment. So wherever we got our wisdom from, whether it's from a particular spiritual tradition or from a wise friend or a family member, or even just wisdom from our own hard fought experience, uh, it doesn't really matter if we have it unless we bring it into this present moment right here, right now. And so another element of, of uh, mindfulness is remembering to bring our wisdom yeah, into this present moment. And so, you know, when we think about like how mindfulness could apply to hypertension or high blood pressure, you know, one of the questions is, is just like, how important is high blood pressure? And, uh, you know, cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death in the United States and the world. Um, and blood pressure is one of the major drivers of cardiovascular disease. Uh, more than half of people uh, in the United States who have um, hypertension uh, don't have it under control. And we've even seen um, some good research that's shown that uh, if we bring blood pressure down below like 120 uh, millimeters of mercury systolic, like your top number, uh, it really can make a, a big difference um, in uh, mortality. Um, you know, these are some of the guidelines these days around like levels of hypertension. And you might, if you know what your blood pressure is, you might even see where you fit uh, in here. So, you know, anything over like 120 systolic, like your top number, and anything over 80 diastolic would be elevated blood pressure. And then even hypertension gets into higher levels than that, like you can see on that, that figure there. You know, one of the amazing things is that even though like half of American adults have high blood pressure, we can get it under control in just about everybody. Like uh, there's been decades of research that's shown that, you know, say if we're overweight, that bringing weight reduction into our lives, it can drop blood pressure from like five to 20 millimeters of mercury uh, systolic. If we adapt healthy eating plans uh, that have a lot of uh, plants in them and uh, rich in fruits and vegetables and nuts and legumes, for example, uh, we can bring blood pressure down like eight to 14 millimeters of mercury. Uh, salt intake or sodium intake has a big impact as does physical activity, uh, moderating our alcohol consumption and even taking blood pressure meds. Um, blood pressure medications have really come a long ways and there's a lot of different ones out there right now that can be really effective too. If your, your blood pressure is high, um, you're, you're not alone. In fact, you're in the company of, of many people on earth. There's some evidence that about 90% of people in industrialized nations are expected to have elevated blood pressure in their lifetime uh, at this moment in history. And so when we look at like what we're living at in this moment in history, it's, it's really different than it was just a couple hundred years ago, you know, that we have much more in the way of like environments that lessen our need to be physically active. You know, whether it's more sedentary jobs or not needing to forage for our food anymore or, you know, walk down to the creek to wash our clothes or really have to uh, do a lot of uh, uh, physical work to, to just live uh, for a lot of us. Um, and so we live in this sedentary environment where even a lot of our pastimes can be sedentary, whether it's just, say, watching a show or something. There's also evidence that um, food... Uh, in terms of like its price in relationship to inflation, um, there's evidence that it's it's never really been cheaper. Uh, and um, some elements, it's never really been tastier either and that folks have figured out how to kind of really science, you know, the perfect combo of like sweetness and saltiness and fat and kind of mouthfeel to get um, relatively inexpensive, very tasty uh, food. And, and when we have inexpensive, high calorie, Tasty food makes sense that our weight's going to go up, and uh, and we see that uh, in most industrial 
industrialized uh, nations now. Um, there's lots of social norms, you know, around and marketing around, you know, what we should eat and what we should drink, including alcohol and, you know, food and sedentary pastimes. And there's also a lot of stressors um, in life right now, too, that can influence our emotion regulation. And sometimes we turn to save foods or sedentary pastimes or just having a drink after work in order to moderate our um, emotions. And uh, and so the idea is that, you know, if we can actually help ourselves like self-regulate more, you know, to become more like self-aware of just like our thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations in relationship to the environment that we live in right now, uh, it might help us like take a step back and actually uh, really understand what's driving um, some of our behaviors and if we want it to go in those directions. Um, by meditating and learning how to place our mind where we choose to place it, it can enhance our attention control or that word in the middle there around self-regulation so that we can place our minds where we choose to. So say if our self-awareness is letting us know that you know, maybe we want to eat more fruits and vegetables, for example, pretty much all of us know something about what we could do to improve our health. but actually training ourselves to place our mind where we choose to place it through our attention control can actually help us act on that self-awareness and uh, what our wisdom is sharing with us. And then learning ways to regulate our emotions can help us uh, regulate it in healthy ways rather than maybe turning to, you know, just grabbing a pint of ice cream out of the freezer or, you know, streaming some show or, you know, having an extra drink that maybe we shouldn't have had. And uh, so in the end, that can help us um, potentially like lower our blood pressure and also just have a happier and healthier life. So those are some of the ways through which we think that mindfulness training can actually influence blood pressure. You know, when we look at the mindfulness-based blood pressure reduction program, this program that you're about to be embarking on, we train you up in the basic mindfulness skills of like emotion regulation and attention control and self-awareness that you can see in that top blue box. And then we tr take those skills and actually direct them towards your relationships with the things that really drive blood pressure, like your relationship with stress or with physical activity or weight loss or diet or your medication use, for example. And so you can kind of like pick your path. You know, each of us, there's so many drivers of blood pressure that we'll get a chance to see which ones, if any, we want to work on. And say, you know, I had one fellow in class who, you know, he, he rode around the state of Vermont on his bike during class. Like he did not need more physical activity, but he did realize that he, you know, ate too much salt in his diet and that his stress levels were pretty high. So he worked on those. In class, other people might work on physical activity. But what this program does is it actually trains you up in self-awareness practices, attention control practices, and emotion regulation practices, and then allows you to really direct them towards your relationship with whatever behaviors uh, influence blood pressure that you want to work on in this class. So that's the idea behind uh, just what mindfulness is and how it has the potential to bring your blood pressure down. So. Um, just in summary, you know, mindfulness can be that awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally, and it also involves remembering, or in other words, remembering to bring our wisdom into this present moment. If we can foster our skills in self-awareness and emotion regulation and attention control and actually direct those skills to our relationship with the major drivers of blood pressure, that can help lower our blood pressure and improve our happiness and well-being in the process. So hope you have a really good experience uh, with this program and, uh, and we'll see you in the next uh, presentation on the science uh, behind this program too. So thank you.